What does it mean to be a submissive wife? Have you ever wondered if the key to a thriving Christian marriage is rooted in submission? Hello and welcome. My name is Destiny and I'm so glad you guys are here. I am a mom of four and a wife of 10 years. In the next few minutes, we'll chat about what the Bible says about submission, practical tips, and how submitting to my husband transformed and deepened my marriage. But before we dive in, I want to mention another YouTuber, Janae. She also creates beautiful biblical homemaking videos. And she's created a video on submission as well over on her page. So after you guys are done watching this video and giving it a like and comment, I encourage you guys to also go over and watch hers and comment and like hers as well. I'll link hers down in the comments and in the description. Before we dive in, I just want to pray. I know this can be a touchy subject for some of you guys, but it is so important to talk about. So let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Help us to obey your word and to submit to your commands, Jesus. We just want to pray for the softening of our hearts that we can hear this and not become bitter or become angry, that we can hear what you have to say, Lord, and that we can ultimately submit to our husbands out of love and out of reverence of you, Jesus. Thank you so much. We love you, Lord. Amen. As Christians, as Christian moms and homemakers and just Christians in general, we need to test everything against scripture. So the model of a Christian marriage is right there in the Bible. So we are going to start there first. Ephesians 5.22 Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they fed and cared for their body just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Colossians 3.18 Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as it is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Now, statistically speaking, men would prefer to be respected over than love if they had to choose either, and women would rather feel loved than respected. And I just find it so interesting and kind of comical that the Lord put it in here several times, reminding us what he already knew we were going to struggle with. Wives, submit yourself to your husbands, respect your husbands, and he's saying, husbands, love your wives. He's gently reminding us of things that are going to be hard for our human flesh. 1 Peter 3, wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husband, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. When they see the purity and reverence of your lives, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. 
You are her daughters, if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives, and treat them with respect as a weaker partner and as heirs with you of all gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Now, God gave us free will, but it is very, very clear in our Bibles that a Christian woman must submit to her husband. Our husbands are our leaders, but this is far more bigger than that. Submitting ourselves to our husband is obedience to God and the commands he has for us. Submitting ourselves to our husbands shows our reverence for Christ, our fear of the Lord. Unfortunately, with the movement of feminism and our society of really pushing strong, independent women, there have been so many Christian women who are against submitting to their husbands. Now, just because I submit to my husband doesn't mean that I am a quiet little puppy in the background. No, we are a team. Now, there used to be a time in the beginning of our marriage where submitting to my husband was really challenging for me. In fact, I don't think I even knew that I needed to submit to him. We were both so young and... I don't know, we were like best friends and it was just not something that anyone ever talked to me about what it truly meant to submit to my husband and so there were a lot of arguments and a lot of pushback from myself when I wanted to be right and I wanted to be the leader. I wanted to lead. I didn't want to respect where my husband was coming from and what he was saying. I wanted to be right and that is not good but unfortunately i feel like so many marriages are like that nowadays where because we've been led to believe that we are the same that a man can do what a woman can do and a woman can do what a man can do i think it's truly affected our marriages in this society because we think we can go into a marriage and be on the same page and we both can lead our families and we both don't really need to respect each other when we think what you're saying is wrong and if we're arguing then I need to be right and that is just so unfortunate now God created us both in his image but he also created us very differently and with different roles and so the first year of our marriage was pretty rough because I just needed to get out of his way. I was in his way to be our head leadership of our home. And that leads me to the first practical tip on how to be a submissive wife. Get out of the way. Let your husband lead. Let him take charge in situations. Communicate together, but ultimately it is his decision. Now, if this decision goes against the Bible and what God wants for us, then obviously you can step up and speak up and pour some life into him and remind him what the Bible says. Now, submission is not putting the will of your husband before the will of Christ. We both need to put Christ first. He is our number one. He comes before both of us. And truly, if we both are putting God number one and we are prioritizing our relationship with him, it makes it easy for my husband to love me and it makes it easy for me to want to submit to him because we are not doing it on our own strength. We are doing it through the Holy Spirit. Now, our husbands are not perfect. They are not God. And that is why it is so important to not put them above our Lord. They are going to fail us because guess what? They're human just like us. But if our if we are putting our hope and foundation and everything in the Lord, then it's going to make it easy to want to submit to our husbands even when they are failing here. Even when it is hard and they're not loving us well, it is going to make it easier because we're not doing it ultimately for our husbands. We're doing it in reverence of the Lord. A woman who fears the Lord wants to serve the Lord more than her husband. And by serving our husbands, we are serving the Lord. So even when it's hard, 
we are going to continue and ask for God's strength to serve our husbands with a loving heart because that means we are serving our Lord. As Christian women, I don't know when it became a thing, probably forever ago, but to pick and choose what we want to do out of the Bible. I am still learning God's word and growing in him every day, but it is so clear that it says to submit to our husbands in our Bible. We cannot just pick and choose what we want to do out of the Bible. This is what God calls us to, and this is what we need to do. Another practical way on how to be submissive to your husband is to prioritize what he wants you to prioritize. So if he likes the bed to be made like my husband, then make the bed. I could care less about making the bed, but I know my husband really appreciates when it's made and it makes him feel loved. So I try to do it most days. When I matured as a wife and in my faith and realized that it's not all about me and decided to submit to my husband, our marriage got so much better. Our communication got better. Our intimacy got better. And what was once a marriage full of nagging and arguments turned into a beautiful, healthy marriage focused on the Lord. I love greeting my husband at the door as much as I can. Sometimes I'm in the other room when he walks in, but if I am in the kitchen and I see him come in, I love to stop what I'm doing and go over to him and just give him a hug and just greet him and spend a few intentional moments together. Make time for your husband and just time to spend together intentionally so you can be in the word together, be in prayer together, and just speak life into your husband. God calls us to submit to our husbands, not because we're less worthy, but because of the order. Or there were times where I felt like, I don't want to submit to you because you're not worthy of my submission. But that is so wrong. And sister, if you are feeling that way towards your husband, I just pray that you can feel encouraged that we each are willing and it's voluntary whether or not we will obey God. But as Christ's followers, we will choose to obey God even if it doesn't make sense. Now, for the first year and several years, actually, into our marriage, I idolized the worth for my husband when I submitted to him. I wanted the affirmations. I wanted the thank yous of submitting to him. That quickly became an idol because our only fulfillment should be from the Lord, not from our husbands, not from submitting to our husbands, because we will be disappointed if we look for our fulfillment anywhere else. That's not what we were created for. Now, if we both are in order and we both are prioritizing the Lord and our husbands are leading well and us as women are submitting well to our husbands, there is going to be glorious, joyful times. Our marriage is going to be thriving and the communication is going to be well and the intimacy is going to be well. And you are going to feel fulfilled by your husband in that, but it shouldn't be the only thing you're looking for, the only reason that you submit to your husband. Your fulfillment should first and foremost come from our Lord because we both are human and we are going to fail and we are going to disappoint each other. So if we are only looking for our worth from our husbands, we are going to be disappointed really quickly. Speak life into your husband. There's a time to be silent and let the Lord speak to him, but there's also a time to be God's mouthpiece and speak life into him with love. God created us to be his helpmate, not his possession, but his helpmate. 
And it is truly an honor and a blessing to be able to be submissive, to be able to submit to my husband who is leading his family well and I do not feel oppressed like a lot of the world tells you that submitting to a man, submitting to your husband oppresses women. That is not the case. That is so wrong. Always be in prayer for your husband. I feel like the enemy is out to kill and destroy our Christian men and our strong leader leaders. I just pray that we can be women who are continuously praying for our husbands. At any time they come to mind or we think of them, that we also stop and pray for them. That we pray against any attacks that they may be facing. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and chatting about biblical submission. I would love to keep talking down in the comments, so comment your thoughts below or just say a simple hi or leave a simple heart. Commenting helps boost this video out to other women just like you, so I truly, truly, truly appreciate your support. Don't forget to go over to Janae's channel and give her video on submission a watch. I have it linked down below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and I will catch you guys on the next one. Mm -hmm.